Let's go. Here we are. Hello, Romina. Hello, Rodrigo. What is this that we're doing right now? Can you explain? <laughs> Can you explain? Can you tell me what is, what is happening right now? Because I'm, I'm confused. I am a, really, a, a, a little confused. Please tell me. <laughs> All right. Well, what we're doing here is the boom. And the boom what? is one of the perks of, of okay. being a Create IRL member. So as you know, Rodrigo, being a uh, part of Create IRL, Create IRL mm -hmm. is a members only club for creatives. And so we is like it, to is get- Is it like a secret society? Is it that, I mean, kind, of, that kind of deal? A, a little bit, a little bit. A little bit, okay, society. okay. Um, but it's, it's easy. As long as you're cool, you're in. Okay, okay. Um, and so, that works. I mean, that's how you got in. So it's very yes, that's true. And and the, and the thousand dollars because I and still remember. Right, right, right. Yeah, but yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I had, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. We don't talk about that part. We don't talk about no, that. No. Um, but um, the boom is one of the perks that we do offer for Creative RL, and it is okay. a monthly interview um, where okay. we bring on creative professionals. You know, the cool people who are doing cool things, and you're like, oh man, I want to do that. So we bring these these guys in and we interview them and talk to them and um wait and they, does that does that mean we have a guest today is that what you're quite, like kind of suggesting is that is that I where mean, this is going of, i mean we do have we do have a guest um no way which is surprising because this is the very first boom yes and it's already booming because people boomed. are yeah exactly. yeah people are exactly which is amazing um but we do have a, a very, very cool guest with us okay. today. And her name is Jacqueline Dallas. Some people in Wait, the audience. The Jacqueline Dallas? Yes. Do you know who no she way. is? Of course I know who she is. Oh. Of course I know. I mean, she's amazing. You, I love right? her. She's amazing. She's really good. Some of the some of the people who are watching probably know her as nothing but tech. Right. And uh, she is this super cool girl who does um, tech videos on YouTube. But not only that, she is also the CEO of Nothing But Tech. So That's a woman cool. of my own heart, businesswoman. Yes. And she is also a public speaker. She has spoken in many conferences and universities and any place that you can think of. She's talked about uh, growing on social media, video creating, and so she is, without a doubt, an amazing first guest. What do you think should about we, that, Rodrigo? I, I love it. I think that's amazing. And should we bring, uh, I mean, should we, should we bring her on? Do you think people? I, I think so. I think I now? think that's that's why you know the <laughs> the, the public is is clamoring the public for, for that. So yeah. So let's do that. And wow! Hey. Oh my god! <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. I'm super stoked about this. <laughs> Yeah, we're welcome, glad to Jacqueline. Have you. you guys gave me like such a hype intro that now all it's left to do is disappoint everyone. But I'm still very <laughs> stoked to be on. You know what? It's 2020. It's we're there's there's yeah. a whole bunch of, of disappointments here. So I think yeah, you're... Your disappointment. <laughs> dude, I'm actually like stoked about this idea though. Um, I'm like honored that you guys want me for your first guest, and I just I love the idea of having a creator community. So uh, stoked to be part of this. Cool. Yeah, cool. Sure. Well, um, let's. Uh, let, I I have like a. I know this 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 is going to be more like a conversation than a proper interview. So one thing that I really want to know is uh, what? How did you get into this? Like how how did how did you start? What got your interest first? Yeah. Um. I started. It will be six years in February. So like a little um almost six years at this point. Honestly, like quarantine time feels weird. But um, I started with how-to videos and like unboxings and just simple things. Um, the catalyst for it was obviously like an interest in tech and an interest in video, but my grandma's need for tech support kind of drove me to post online because I was sending her like these short how-to videos of how to like reset her email password or download an application. And I thought if she needs something like this, there's probably a lot of people online. I was also watching uh, Marquez and a bunch of other creators that um, just created amazing videos. So I started posting uh, just like kind of casually for six months and then it kind of started growing and I was introduced to a community of other creators um, that was maybe like a hundred people in a hangout and we all were just talking about YouTube and it kind of felt like for the first time in my life that I had other people to talk about tech with 
because like my friends are awesome, but they don't care at all about technology. So it was a really cool uh, way to be, first of all, like creating content, but also part of a community. And uh, the rest is history. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that you just kind of started doing it and then evolved from there. Yeah, I honestly, like, I had no idea how to film. I was using a $180 camcorder and like, I didn't know how to light anything. So I never had like proper lighting. Everything was always like grainy. And then um, my editing, I, I remember my first video, I shot it and it was like a live unboxing and I narrated mm. the whole thing. So like my hand movement went with my narration of speaking. And then I decided like, oh, I'm gonna redo this and do a voiceover. So then I tried to match my voiceover to what was going on in the frame instead of editing it down. And that video was absolutely horrendous. Um, so it was very much like learning on the fly. I think a lot of people like think that you need to be great when you start or like know what you're doing. I'm definitely an example of like, I had no idea what I was doing and it just kind of worked out as time went on. Cool. So so you mentioned the $180 cam camcorder. What, what are you currently using to make your videos? All right, now I'm using something a lot more expensive, but um, I didn't <laughs> upgrade. Um, I, I, my first DSLR was the Canon 70D and I got that when I hit a thousand subscribers. So like eight months in. Um, and then my next camera was the A6500 by Sony. Love that camera. And then recently, I've seen the last year, I upgraded to the A7 III. So that's what I'm currently using. And that has the 24 to 70. So it's like a really good prominent camera now that um, shoots 4K. And I feel like as a channel like grows or as any channel grows, it becomes important to focus on quality like eventually. But in the beginning, I think that people are more so like forgiving of the fact that it's not the best quality in the world. Um, so th that actually brings me into one of the questions that I wanted to ask you, which what what is your process for making videos? Like, do you make scripts? Uh, like what what kind of research do you, goes into into it? Because um, you're like reviewing stuff sometimes. So it's like, what is your process? Can you talk to us from like zero to 100? Yeah, um, I just changed my process like an insane amount in the last two months. Uh, up until two months ago, I was doing like the very traditional YouTube thing of like um, just like reviewing the phone, not really coming up with a good title and thumbnail. Um, and I talked to this guy named Liron Segev, who's now like one of my closest friends. And I was like, I really want to grow my channel. Like, what do you think I'm doing wrong? And he looked at it and he was really honest with me. And he's like, your titles and thumbnails, like you're often giving away the entire narrative of your video in your title and thumbnail. And also sometimes I would have a video idea that was good but there was no way to represent what the video was about in the title or thumbnail. Um, also, I'm seeing a bunch of comments. Thank you guys so much for all the love and for joining. Uh, it means a lot. But so now my process is I won't make a video if I don't have a great title and thumbnail in the beginning. So for that, that means uh, that's like the first part of the workload. So coming up with the title and thumbnail. So I'll test out a product, let's say like the Pixel 4a. And I notice, okay, a lot of people are complimenting this phone for its camera. But I think that there's a lot more to it. As I use it, I notice that like the software is really prominent. Uh, the fact that it's a cheap phone is one of the big selling points. So I'm like thinking about it and I think to myself, okay, I think that the title should be something about the fact that this phone isn't just about the camera. And then that's like the narrative for the video. So I know that that's going to be the thesis, the thesis throughout of being like, yeah, the camera's great, but here's what it's also about. Um, and from there, it's then coming up with 10 different title ideas, which I, again, I used to not do any like titles, like I would come up with one right before I was about to post. Um, and now I can't even imagine that I ever did that. But now it's like, I look at 10, oftentimes I'll send them to people and I'll be like, which one would you be more likely to click on? And the one that I ended up doing for the Pixel 4a, if I'm not mistaken, is like Pixel 4a more than the camera. And the reason I did that is because you never want to give away the full narrative of the video in the title. Like if I was to say like Pixel 4a, you should buy this phone, then you don't have to watch the video. I've already given you it. But by saying more than the camera, I kind of like pique your interest of being like, okay, like what else is it about? Um, and that ended up doing pretty well with click through ratio and stuff. So then the main thing is how do you match a thumbnail to that? So then I go through the thumbnail process of matching it. And once those two things are done, those take a lot of time. Uh, then I go through the scripting process. And for that, I used to, again, just script out all my ideas. This is kind of like the longest answer in the world. But um, now what I do is as I'm testing out the phone, I have a Google doc and I'll have um, all the different small things that I notice about it. So like the build feels really comfortable in the hand, surprisingly, even though it's plastic, or this feels like the size that all smartphones should be, just like random things like that, that otherwise I'd forget to put in the video. And then 
I look at my three act structure and I say, okay, what's going to be act one, act two, what's the conflict of this video and what's the resolution. And then I write a script based off of that using the things that I wrote on the Google doc to make sure that I give a comprehensive review. Uh, how do you, how do you, uh, you, you, you mentioned not telling everything, like not giving everything away on the title. Do you have a recipe for uh, also not being clickbaity, like for not just, you know, how do you find that balance and the perfect spot for that, for that title and for everything else? Yeah, that's really tough. I'm not an expert at it. I actually just had like a really long conversation with Leron last week where I was like, I feel like clickbait works, but there's no career longevity with just like clickbaiting an audience. And I never want to be like click a clickbait person. Um, so for me, the main thing that I'm thinking is like, is it representative of the video? If the answer is like, kind of, then that's not the title. Like a lot of times you'll see a title where it's like, a, like 30 seconds of the video addresses what's in the title. And then like, you kind of feel gypped as a viewer of that. So first of all, like, is it actually representative of the video? That's a pretty clear yes, no. And the second one is, can I over deliver? So if I'm doing a title that seems like kind of sensational, even if it represents a video, I want to do something in the video where people watch it and they're like, wow, she over delivered. Like I got more than I thought I was going to get. So oftentimes that's including another feature in the video, like a small thing that maybe I've noticed that other people haven't put in their reviews, or maybe that's surprising them with a really cool intro shot, just something to like give that wow factor. And I think that that way you can do titles that maybe seem like a little more sensational, but they're representative of the video, and then you go the extra mile. Um, my kind of like northern star with that is a channel named Mr. Who's the Boss. All of his titles are really, really clickable. Like I see it and I have to know, but every single time he over delivers on what's in the title. Nice. Yeah. Do you you mentioned you mentioned uh, phones a little bit? Do you think phones are still driving the tech dis discussion at this point? Is that is that what drives the industry? Great question. Uh, yeah, I, I, in in a way, like the videos on my channel, if you look pat, like back at the last 20, most of them are phone videos. And it's because people are constantly looking uh, to like make a buying decision. So there's constant search around it. And a lot of times the major players in the tech industry make a phone. So whether it's Samsung who makes a million other things, but they also make a phone, oftentimes we can see their newest tech in their phones. So I still think that they're driving the industry, but I also think that it's important as a channel to cover things outside of phones. So I try to cover like headphones or laptops and I have to do a better job of that. And that's like my 2021 goal. Um, but I would very much say like the thing smartphones are dead could not be further from the truth. Like we're seeing huge innovation right now in foldables and high refresh rate and camera tech. Like there's a ton of innovation to be had. You just have to look for it. Jacqueline, uh, back in the day where news were consumed in paper, um, there was this thing in, in the tech industry where uh, news, big newspapers and, and, and uh, venues that would talk about tech, uh, they would never accept uh, gifts from, from the companies, from the brands. That was like, a, 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 it was a very basic principle that if a company gives you something, there is a, an immediate uh, problem there of, of uh, interest, conflict of, uh, conflict of interest. And now we see uh, this, this has changed a bit and, and creators are getting buckets of gifts from companies and, and all, all the gear. And how do you, how do, I mean, what do you think about that? And how do you stay, how do you take care of your capacity to stay neutral and still give a hard time to brands, even if a brand is treating you very well? Uh, and, and, and if, and just on, on top of that, if you think this is the way to go from now on, like this is how it's going to be and there's no way to change that. Yeah. Um, to answer the second part first, I think that this is the way that we're going to go with it because um, a lot of times with a brand, you'll get an early hands-on and then there's an embargo. So it gives you time to really test out the product before you uh, make your review. And for creators, that's super advantageous because you can get your video up on launch day, but you've already tested it for a long period of time. Um, so there's those huge advantages for creators where if you want to have a video that does well, you kind of have to have like the pre-embargo. And that's why the tech space and the smartphone space is so hard. Like the barrier of entry is kind of high now because unless you have a really interesting idea after the fact, there's already like 50 videos that have been posted. So um, when I don't get a uh, unit early, like uh, if a lot of people get 
like let's say the iPhone 12 mini and I didn't get it, then I have to now come up with an interesting way to title and thumbnail my video or it will still do well because there's been 20 to 50 other videos about it. Um, so that's like the second part. I don't think that we'll see that changing. But I would say to the first part, I've done plenty of reviews where a company will send it out and I won't like it or I won't like certain aspects of it. And I'm always honest about that because I'd rather like ruin the quote unquote, like ruin the relationship with the company and keep my credibility. Because at the end of the day, like, you spend years building your credibility, you can break it, like ruin it in one bad decision. Um, so I'm always mindful of that. And I also think like if a company is going to like cut me off and like blacklist me for being honest, then I don't really want to work with those representatives anyways. And I'll just miss those videos. And I think like most people in the tech space are pretty aligned on that. So because of that, it hasn't happened. I, I, I don't know anyone personally that's been like blacklisted because they're honest. And I also think like None of us are out to hurt a company just because. So if we say something, like there is a little bit of validity behind it. Cool. Hey, uh, some people are talking about the future of smartphones, and I've seen your your reviews of the foldable ones. And okay. how, how big is foldable tech? Is this is this coming for for real, or yeah, is this, is just this a, a real thing, or is it just a gimmick? This is a future, man. Uh, it is very <laughs> much a future. No one. Uh, there's a lot of naysayers, there's a lot of flaws with it, and I'll give you that. And I even made a video a couple weeks back saying the problem with the Z Fold 2, because there are some problems with it. Uh, you have the price point that's really hard for a lot of people to get into. You have uh, the durability issues. You have the fact that um, there's not a ton of app support yet. But all that's the same, all those things can be fixed, and they will be fixed as innovation continues and as it starts getting adapted by the market. Um, we see this anytime there's a new piece of tech brought into the market. A lot of people question it, like with the iPhone. Um, and then over time, the value is seen. And um, the best products uh, the best products basically will rise to the top. So there's been some ideas where it's a terrible idea, like 3D TVs. That's not the future. And uh, the market made a very big decision and a clear decision about that that wasn't like going to revolutionize anything. But I think the idea of having a small phone and then a tablet when you want it is really, really um, interesting to a lot of people. And a lot of people are really like, into it, they just don't want to spend the money on it yet. But I think it's clear to the big brands working on it that there is market potential and they just have to like take the risk now and eventually get the reward. So I do think that it's going to play like a huge part in our future as time goes on. How close uh, are we from 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 Apple making something foldable, you think? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I saw some stuff about like it maybe being in the works, but I'd kind of be surprised if it was this year just because I still think that there are too many issues and I could definitely be wrong about that. Apple has definitely made some quote unquote like non Apple decisions in the last year. So they could surprise us. But I would say by 2024, it will be a lot more refined. I don't know if Apple will have made it by then, but it will be like something that I think will be a lot more mainstream. Speaking of the future, I was wondering, do you see yourself doing this forever? Do you think that you could do this forever, what you're doing right now with your channel? I would love to. Um, the question of like career longevity, I think, is one that is always on people that run social media, like in their mind. I think that mm -hmm. the thing with tech is that I'm only half the show. Like there's another half, which is the product. So there's a lot less on me to be interesting uh, versus like a vlogger. Like we see that a lot of times vloggers have less career longevity because people mm -hmm. like get sick of them or tired of like their mantra, or, like their daily routine. But with tech, tech is constantly evolving. So as long as I can keep up the quality and be interesting, then I think there's still an opportunity to grow. And like we see people like Marquez, who's been in this for over a decade, and he is just beginning, it feels like. Like there's so much room for him to continue to grow. So I think that at least for the next decade, I would say like this will be a career. And I think the thing with YouTube that's really interesting is like it prepares you for a career in many different fields if it doesn't work out. So like public speaking, consulting, uh, being a videographer, like there are a lot of opportunities that I could do if YouTube didn't work out. But the reason I love YouTube so much is that I get to do all of them. So that's like the goal, hopefully, to keep getting to do it. But only time will tell, I guess. I like that. It's all it's it's you also have like this really um, like the process that you go through to for making your videos is so interesting because I, I feel like you know, people will look at review channels or unboxing channels and they'll think that there's not a lot of, of work that goes into making them or that the time to make them is not as, as much as, you know, as, as it actually is. And the idea of, um, you know, doing all the research that you have to do and then your Google doc and all that stuff, mm -hmm. 
it's yeah. just, it was so fascinating to hear you say all of that. Um, because you really just think that these people are just picking up the phone or picking up the device and just talking. Um, yeah. And the three act structure was very surprising to me. Um, Dude, just it looks of, to me, I, I used to be like, uh, I used to like literally say um, in public forums, like, I don't think that there's the three act structure in storytelling or in tech rather. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think that the typical storytelling principles apply to tech. And uh, I had Colin and Samir on my podcast and they were like, I think it does. And they were talking to me about it. And then um, I watched a video from my friend Ali Abdal, which I, I think I just butchered his name, but he's an incredible YouTuber that I met last year in Northern Ireland. And uh, he has done an incredible job of combining medicine, storytelling, and himself on the channel. And normally it's like niche down, pick one, and he hasn't. And I think that the common thread that uh, pulls all of his videos together is his incredible storytelling and following that 3X structure. So for tech, the 3X structure is a little different than it would be for a vlog. Like if I was a vlogger and I was, I'll take Peter McKinnon, for example. He made a video like last year with Casey and I said all about a trip gone wrong. And act one was like the setup of like, we're going on this trip together. It's going to be a really good time. And then they introduced the fact that they're eating fish and chips. And then act two is like, he got really sick from the fish and chips and like all the issues and like the turmoil of not being able to film. The conflict is like, he has to go back to his hotel room and he can't film. And then the resolution is like, he made this video, but they couldn't film and Casey flew home. And that's like very, very clear three act structure with tech. Sometimes it's more so like if I'm reviewing I'll pick like the uh, Pixel 4a, let's say. Act one is like, Google is a software first company. A lot of times they don't really focus on the hardware with their phone. When people look at this phone, they say, oh, you would only buy it from the camera. That's like the setup. Act two would be like, and then in act one, I would be like, but it's not only about the camera, like setting up the story. Act two is looking at all the things that it's about, getting to the conflict of like, here's the main thing it's about aside from the camera. And then the resolution is like, so it's not about the camera. Does it really matter? And should you still buy it? Um, and that's like a much less traditional three-act, but there's a way to do it. And ever since I started really focusing and literally writing out the three-act structure on my Google Doc when I'm writing the script, the watch time has gone up immensely on all the videos. And I think it's because like, as humans, we were drawn to people that tell good stories. And I think that's something that's really lacking from the tech community of like this focus on good storytelling. And the creators that are blowing up right now, like Mr. Who's the Boss, are really focusing on storytelling and even like traditional storytelling of like giving a little bit more of his life, which I've been trying to do in my videos too. Like just like the little anecdotes that make you feel like you're in just a general conversation versus just like consuming information. Yeah, I, yeah, I like that. Cause it's, it's also part of like your brand too is, is what's intriguing isn't just the reviews that you give, but also it's, it's you. It's, it's the fact that I'm watching you and your perspective. And your perspective is only valuable when you present who you are, right? Yeah. Um, and that's how I think you get career longevity. Like, if you're mm -hmm. just a typical how-to person, it's much harder to have that longevity because people don't feel like a personal connection with you. So, like, one of my main things that I really focus on is creating that personal connection. A, because, like, these people are literally giving me my dream job. Like, if they didn't watch the videos, I couldn't do any of it. So I feel, like, an immense connection with them already. And B a way to make the videos better and a way to make me more relatable is to give a little bit more of myself. So I'm constantly looking for ways to DM people. Uh, I just started a Discord server so we can all talk about our common interest in tech. Um, I constantly include like Easter eggs in my videos, like callbacks to old things or hints for future projects, just to like kind of create like this nothing about tech community. Because I think that that's something that's really important to building a brand successfully and having people that genuinely want to support you. So, all right. This is actually one of the questions that I that I wanted to ask you, but it actually fits perfectly in what you're what we're going into right now, which is okay. your hobbies, your interests. Aside from tech, is there anything that you do that you haven't really shared with your audience that's like something fun, but has also kind of given you perspective in what you do with your work? That's such a good question. Um, you know, I, I have shared it a little bit, so this is somewhat of a cop out, but I've been getting kind of into music a little bit. So I've always okay. been really interested in music. Um, during quarantine, I started to relearn how to play guitar. I was never like good at it. I was always a beginner. I, I played it like 10 years ago and I only ever really learned like the main chords. Um, but I, I started to pick that back up and also kind of like actually learn like the theory behind music. So I've been doing that um, just in like my free time for the past six months. 
Uh, and that gave me a lot of perspective on just like creation in general, because I find like any form of creation pretty fulfilling, like creating music or um, like trying to like just put something together, even though that's like not my career, I just find it really fulfilling. So it like kind of re-showed me that, yeah, I'm really passionate about the business side of YouTube and growing that. But at the end of the day, like the creative side is like what I started it for and what the, th the thing that like brings me the most joy out of all of it. What um what kind of guitar are you playing on right now? Uh, acoustic, made by a company called Orangewood, I think. So are you gonna start a channel where you start reviewing guitars? <laughs> um, I don't have any plans for that soon because I know absolutely <laughs> nothing. Um, but if I ever actually learn something and can provide value, then maybe. <laughs> All right. Let me bring a question from the audience. Uh, someone, okay. someone asked, uh, "Where do you see yourself in ten years?" That you know, the classic, classic, really hard to answer question in a short amount of time. <laughs> um, in ten years, man, that's a long time away. I hope that I'm still doing what I'm doing now in some form. Um, in the last year or two, I've kind of grown the nothing but tech like brand into more than just a YouTube channel. So. I do uh, some like film, pro like uh, freelance production, uh, public speaking, and those are things that I definitely want to continue. Public speaking is something that I never really thought that I would love to do, but I started it a year and a half ago now, and I immediately fell in love with it. It's so cool to connect with people in that way. And the thing with public speaking is a lot of it's just talking about my personal experience and like telling stories. So that's been a huge catalyst in me becoming a better storyteller in my videos. So hopefully I'm still doing that. Uh, 10 years from now, if I'm giving like concrete goals for nothing but tech, I hope that I have like an office space with a couple people working with me. Um, if the channel's at like a million subscribers by then, that'd be really cool. Uh, and I just I just hope that I can like still review tech and that uh, I still find it really interesting and like I'm passionate about it still. Great Do question. you have anyone working with you at the moment or is, is, is it a one person band? Kind of yeah, right now it's me doing everything uh, for like the video production and editing and everything. On the podcast, I work with an incredible editor named Luke. He's like a really good friend of mine. He also edits. Um, and that has been huge because first of all, I, I would have no time for it. But second of all, he knows so much about audio and he's like a jack of all trades. He does everything. So he does like the graphic work for us. He creates the videos for us. He does the audio. Um, and that's actually been a really cool experience because I've never really worked with anyone in that capacity of like every single week we're working on something. Um, so it's taught me how to like manage my time because a lot of times I'll do everything at the last minute, which doesn't work when you're working with someone. Like you got to be respectful of their time too. So I have to feel, like record on a certain date, and I work with a co-host named Darsh. So we split the work. Like the the Digital Dive, which is my podcast, is uh, like co-owned by both of us. It's like not affiliated with nothing but tech. Um, so the really nice thing about that is like when the podcast is successful and we have wins, it's really nice to share it with someone because when nothing but tech is successful. Yeah, I share it with my family and they're the best and I love them and like they're so incredibly supportive and I share it with my friends. But when you're actually building it with someone and like they're making the decisions with you, there's like a different sense of like accomplishment and camaraderie. So it's actually been really, really fun to do the podcast and it's been definitely one of the highlights of like the last eight months. Have you have you ventured out to do anything that isn't tech related as far as a video creation? Like have you done anything, maybe something you haven't even posted on your channel, you know? Yeah. Um, well, something that I do is that I record a lot of vlogs on my phone just for me. So like, I love to be able to go back like and look at what I was doing a year from now or, or last year, like a year ago. So, um, now it's making me sad because, uh, when in COVID, like we can't do any of this stuff. So like, I'll go back and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was at a cafe. Like can't do that. But, uh, normally I'd love to look at it. And, uh, that's something that like, again, that would help with storytelling a lot. And I'll edit them together also, even though I don't post them. So a lot of the times I'll just like, make them and I'll title them like an important day. Like uh, three months ago, I was speaking at Cornell remotely. And I also had um, another like business thing that I can't talk about yet, but I also, in addition to that, had an editing all nighter. And I just like filmed that day. Cause I was like, I'm going to want to look back at this one day and be like, wow, that was unreal that I had to do that. And that I did that. And I actually really enjoyed it. So it was fun to film it and uh, look back on. So that's like the only outside of tech video production that I do. But um, in terms of like, talking about things outside of tech, Darsh and I talk a lot about internet culture and things on our podcast as well, because that's like another one of our passions, like looking at the creator economy and the attention economy. Wow, that's really cool. So you're actually vlogging, but you're not sharing these vlogs. Yeah, online. basically, uh, which maybe one day like I will. But for now, they're kind of just for me to 
I guess like remember what I was doing and kind of like document the process and like the journey. Cause I think like a lot of times it's really easy to get caught up in what last week's video did and what the week before and like look really, really narrow and not see these huge strides of progress. But I love looking back like two years ago and seeing what the video quality looked like and what my struggles were at the time and kind of just seeing um, how it's kind of grown from there. And I'm sure that like for you guys with this project, how are you guys documenting like these early days? Are you doing anything specifically? You know what? That's a really great question. And we've actually really sucked at that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, yeah, time. We actually haven't recorded anything. Um, I think I might have like one video clip because I thought about the same thing. Okay. Um, but I think that's basically it. And I don't, I don't even know if I have that clip anymore, but <laughs> you recorded it though. I think the reason is because we get so caught up in actually doing the work. And like, it's, it's funny because it is create IRL and we are trying to encourage creative people to create, but then we kind of get stuck with the short end of the stick where we're just kind of like, unable to do that sometimes yeah. because we're trying to build up this infrastructure to allow other people to do it right yeah it's a lot are you guys like focusing a lot on like the business side of it like how do we make this work and like the logistical yeah pretty much that's kind of mm -hmm. um where we're at right now especially because so how create irl came into fruition was the point of it was to bring people in real life to create in real life um, from different industries, you know, like not just YouTubers, but all types of creatives. And this year in particular has also been very difficult because there's no in real life stuff. So we've had to yeah. be, be very creative with how we get people together. And so I think that's part of it. And, and kind of thinking about what's fun and what's actually valuable to people where yeah. it's not just another thing that they sign up for, you know, cause that's, mm -hmm. cause we don't like that. Rodrigo's all about lifetime deals and I'm all about how can I get rid of this thing from my life? So both of us are very much into only having the highest of quality of stuff um, and kind of bringing that, bringing that into, into the, the members that are, that are a part of this. Yeah. Um, what's like the, if you guys had to say like a highlight so far, what would you say has been like one of the coolest things that you guys have done so far? Well, we have a, we have this thing that's called the shot, which is our monthly virtual hangouts. So all of our members will get together in a video chat and we'll just hang out. And awesome. it's supposed to only be like an hour, but it ends up some, like one time we were on for like six hours and it's really just wow. like people coming in like, um, playing music or, or we'll just talk about stuff that's bothering us or, you know, we'll talk about our latest projects or get ideas for stuff. People will ask questions because we'll have people who are really great at, you know, editing podcasts. And then we'll have other people who are really great at drawing. And then these people have questions because like you venturing into music, like getting back into music and stuff, you would go in there and you would ask, Hey, like, what's, you know, what's the best yeah, amplifier to use for my electric guitar and like all this stuff. And, and there's people who are there who have done this for years. Um, yeah. That's and it's so cool. Yeah. And it's really interesting because you get to, to really hear from people kind of like this, where I get to hear from you. And like, I had no idea what your process was, you know, like you and I, like we've, we've ba basically only talked publicly on Twitter. So it's like, yeah. I had no idea what your actual process was for, you know, your creative process. And it's really interesting. And bringing this kind of thing is, I think, helpful, um, not just for people who watch your videos, who are interested in knowing that kind of thing, like your audience, but also other creatives and people who are interested in that kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. Wow, good for you guys. What, um, the, the sense of community also is very, is very strong on the on these uh, events. I remember when we, we, we got back to it. It was on, on the time where that, you know, the COVID stress was at its peak. And and then people started asking each other, you know, what, what have you been doing? And, and the answer was exactly the same for everyone. It was like, I'm depressed at home. I'm depressed at home. I'm depressed at home. And we kind of understood, understood that it's uh, like, we don't have to be. Like we have these things that we do and things that we share that are very unique uh, to to us that we don't have to take this the stressful depressing path by default right we can't just yeah. get 
together and talk and and have uh, this community and, and and share stuff. And it's been fun uh, ever since. It's been super and, nice. And basically, what happened was we ended up playing Among Us for like two hours. <laughs> so, I'll hang up. Someone just set it up. That's and awesome. Just played. <laughs> Among yeah. Us is like literally taking over. It was Rodrigo's Everywhere. first time. He had never played. It was my first he time. To, yeah. He had to learn how to play because yeah, I've actually I've playing. never played it before either, actually. But I've See? heard like, yeah, it's I'm been like a weird. <laughs> you, <laughs> it's dangerous, Jacqueline. Don't jump in. It's, yeah, it's no, dangerous. people are people are obsessed with it. Uh, it's <laughs> it's crazy, like to see how viral it's gone on YouTube because I think that that just like shows that so many people love it. But yeah crazy yeah cool so that does uh connor he, he he's he's commenting that, that that hangout session sounds dope it is man it is really <laughs> cool so after the stream or by the end of the stream we'll, we'll tell you how to to join and how to, to to be with us it will everyone will be welcome there it's really fun and uh yeah we'll give all the the directions of how how to yeah Oh, I do want to bring it back to to Jacqueline. Jacqueline did a really great job of of interviewing us for the last yeah, five minutes. She, but <laughs> she was good. Um, what what advice would you give to people who want to do what you're doing? Um, just start. I know that's like really cliche advice, but I think like a lot of times, and I experience this with the podcast. It's like there are so many things to do. It feels so overwhelming that you do absolutely nothing. And I do that with a lot of things in my life. I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna take me 10 hours. All right, I'll just start it tomorrow. And I think that I totally relate to that. I still do it a lot, but I think with something as incredible as YouTube that can literally change your life, it's just important just to start and not put too much pressure on being perfect in the beginning. I think like Darsh and I ran into this issue with our podcast where we spent months trying to come up with a name and trying to figure out what it was going to be and how we we're going to title things and how we we're going to do podcasts. We didn't know anything, right? Podcasts are totally different than YouTube videos. Um, how are we going to become good podcast hosts? How are we going to become good interviewers? Like all these questions. And we didn't do anything for months. And looking back now, I'm glad that we waited and came up with a name and a format in a way. But I think that there were so many unforeseen obstacles that still came up. We ended up having to change the name. There was a lot of issues with that, that like we put so much time into making it perfect. We should have just started and then figured it out along the way. Um, and I think the same thing is with YouTube. Like even if you don't know how to edit a video, like let's say you've never edited, you've never filmed anything, still just try because I think no matter how good you are, the improvement will still be there. Like Peter McKinnon was an incredible videographer and photographer before he started YouTube. But if you watch his videos from three years ago and then you watch his videos now, there's a huge difference. So no matter how good you are or when you start, you'll still experience improvement and i also think at the end of the day like it the youtube is a really incredible platform to grow on and it rewards the people that wait like i just saw i'm gonna pull it up right now statistics on twitter the average youtube channel that has 1 million subscribers has posted 3873 videos that's a ton of videos like that's an insane number to think about Right. Wow. So like and the average yeah. channel that has a hundred thousand video or a hundred thousand subscribers has posted four hundred and eighteen videos. I think I've posted less than two hundred, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, maybe two fifty. So I mm -hmm. honestly don't know, but definitely less than four hundred. And I've already hit a hundred thousand, right? So it feels like sometimes it will be like you'll see a channel blow up overnight and you'll be like, Oh, like I've put in like, six years of work and I'm still like at a hundred thousand, like and that's a ton of people, right? But sometimes you can get in this YouTube tunnel of thinking that like there's always the next milestone that you want to hit. And I think like just starting and not worrying about how long it's going to take to hit the milestone or how good you're going to be right away is huge. And then I guess like the actual like practical practical advice, like if you're actually going to get started, focus a ton on the titles and thumbnails. Like what I was saying in the beginning, if a video doesn't have a good way to title and thumbnail it, even if it's the best video in the world, no one's going to watch it, which sucks. But it's the reality of YouTube. Like it, since it's so saturated with content, you need to stand out in a way. So um, if there's not a way to stand out with your title and thumbnail and you don't have an existing audience, then the video is just not going to do well. So focus a lot on getting a good title and thumbnail and focus a lot on engaging watch time. Like if a video, I think that there's so many people that like try to give you really specifics to the algorithm. But at the end of the day, Mr. B said this, the algorithm really just wants a video that people click on, it has a high CTR, and that people watch. It has good watch time. And videos that have both those things will get recommended because it's in YouTube's best interest to give people interesting content that they're going to watch for a long period of time. So focus on those two things. And the last final piece of advice is 
make sure that you deliver on the title and thumbnail and try to over deliver if you can. It doesn't have to be a huge over delivery, but something that makes the viewer feel like that they got what they came here for and you actually gave them a little extra, that is more likely to make them then subscribe. It's a, I feel like there is a, also a, a little bit of a misunderstanding of of the numbers because people tend to think that they need a uh, and I'm saying this based on 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 stuff that I, I'm I'm watching, they okay. tend to believe that they need like millions of subscribers. When uh, and I I saw this guy um, I, I won't remember his channel now, but he has two channels. One has like one million followers and the other one has uh i don't know a hundred thousand okay. and he's making a lot more money on the hundred thousand channel because of the kind of content because of the way he's guiding that channel so it's a it's it's not just the volume of of people uh watching but people actually watching it and, and there's something else there right yeah um if we're talking from like the money aspect which um, I don't think that people should get into YouTube in hopes to make a lot of money. I haven't ever seen someone be like super successful that isn't passionate about video, but just wants to make money. There's probably easier ways to do it online. Um, but if you're passionate about it and you want to make it your job, then the CPM is the main thing that dictates how much money a channel makes. So channels in like the personal finance niche have a really high CPM, which uh, is basically how much YouTube pays you for uh, per thousand views. So you can have a channel that has 100,000 subscribers and a channel that has a million, but if you're the channel with 100,000 subscribers and you're in the personal finance niche, you can end up making a lot more than the channel with a million because the in the personal finance niche, the advertisers are willing to pay a lot of money because they're like things like banks and credit cards and stocks and things like that where um, there's this high return. Like if uh, you're, let's say that you're in the kids space and you're an advertiser for like Barbie or something. You can't make a ton of money off of like a kid that buys a Barbie doll. Like you can make money, but if you're um, in the personal finance niche and you get someone to like sign up with a credit card, like there's a lot more opportunity or sign a loan agreement with a bank. Like there's a lot more opportunity to make money. So because of that, um, advertisers are willing to pay a lot. And there's so much competition in the personal finance niche of like with uh, in terms of advertisers, like there's a ton of banks and um, credit cards and things like that, that the advertisers then compete and drive the price up. It's all like supply and demand. So um, there are certain niches where you will make more money, but um, for me, AdSense makes up a really, really small amount of my income, actually. Uh, and I get anywhere from like 100,000 to 500,000 views a month. And it's still really not substantial. Substantial, And it's because even if my CPM is pretty like average, uh, it doesn't pay a ton. Like an average CPM could be anywhere from like five to 10 or $15. And you have to really be getting a ton of views to make it your full-time thing. So if you're a creator already watching this and you're trying to go full-time, it almost makes more sense to try to create affiliate or merch or like do direct to consumer or do brand deals. Those three things make up much more of my income than uh, AdSense. AdSense probably only makes up, I don't know, like maybe five to 20% at the most. So um, yeah. I think that there's this whole like lie that's been told about AdSense of like, oh my God, like these YouTubers are rolling in money, but like, the top, mm. top tier ones are, but a lot of the other ones are still making a lot of money, but from different sources. Mm. Jacqueline, um, our our pro member, Michael, because okay. we do have pro members, he wants to know what's your ultimate goal out of the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, um, I think the main thing is just growing the channel. Um, and I also try to improve like one thing with every video. So whether it be like set design or editing style, like in the last six months, I think that the editing has gotten substantially better because I've really focused on making every single second really engaging. And uh, that's something that I'll focus on every video. Like, okay, like what cool sound effect could I add that like feels like it really fits with the action that I just took? Like if I write on a paper, can I add in the uh, sound of writing on a paper to make it like sell the effect and make someone think like, oh, like they want the extra mile with sound design? Um, so it's always like on the day to day, like figuring out like what can I do to a over deliver on content and b like just get a little bit better, which then in turn grows the channel. Great question. Yeah, that was a great question. So we do have pro members um, aside from just the regular the regular tier, which we call the crashers because they're party crashers. Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, and the pro members do get to ask questions on in in the boom. Um, so. 
thank you, Michael, for asking the question. Um, but we are going to start wrapping up in just a bit here. It was so awesome to have you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time and for, for breaking a, a Saturday to come hang out with us and, and talk about your creative process. Yeah, you know, if we're being fully honest, the fact that we're doing this on a Saturday is totally my fault because I did not have Twitter notifications on for my DMs and I missed the DM trying to confirm for earlier in the week. So thank you guys for making it work on a Saturday. Um, and thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. And I had a great time talking with you guys. No, of course, perfect. of course. Yeah, that was perfect. Um, so for for those, uh, we have some some people in here who are maybe not familiar with, with your work. Where okay. can they find you? How okay. can they find you? Your website, your tags, all of the things. This is your, your where you promo. It's my self promo time. Okay. Um, you can find me on t uh, Twitter at MBT Jacqueline, uh, J A C K L Y N. It's kind of a weird spelling. Uh, Instagram, the same thing, MBT Jacqueline. YouTube, actually, the same thing as well. I just got that URL. So youtube.com backslash MBT Jacqueline. Or if you're just searching on YouTube, nothing but tech. Uh, on my podcast with Darsh, it's called The Digital Dive, and I just launched a Discord. So if you want to join that, it's a community of just people that are really interested in tech. Uh, that's the Nothing But Tech Discord. That was a lot. That's super cool. Are you guys talking about like tech news and stuff on your Discord ch channel? Like what, what's some of the stuff that's, that's being talked about? Literally anything. So it, it literally launched uh, two days ago, and it already has like oh 200 God. members, which I'm really excited about. Uh, and I haven't like put it, put it in a video or anything. So it's uh, people follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all of them are like supporters of the channel. So that's like the common thread. Like I'm almost like everyone's mutual friend in the discord. Uh, so we're all talking about just like things in tech. Cause as I said in the beginning, like a lot of people that are interested in tech don't have any friends that are also interested in tech. So I really wanted to build a community to give people the opportunity to talk about tech in the same way that they gave me the opportunity to do that on my YouTube channel. Um, so that's one channel. The other channel is a recommendations channel where we can recommend our favorite books, TV, music, etc. Then there's the last channel, which is the hidden references channel. And as I said earlier, I put like Easter eggs in my videos, which is like callbacks to older videos or hints for future ones. So it's kind of a place where people can put them in and discuss it, um, which like selfishly for me is my favorite channel because I put a lot of time into coming up with cool Easter eggs. And it's really awesome when people notice them. I love it. Easter eggs are my favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, it's literally so fun to just like come up with it and then have people like speculate and then finally like reveal it. It's all yeah, fun. it's like a, it's like a scavenger hunt. Yeah, cool. actually, yeah. Though, it's really cool. I yeah. like it. Um, well, if you guys are interested in Create IRL, we you can find us at createirl.com. There's also going to be links and such in the description of this video, which you'll be able to watch, I think, probably tomorrow. Um, oh. if you want to share it with people, uh, Jacqueline and, Definitely. and, uh, yeah, we're create IRL everywhere. Uh, we're pretty consistent with our brand. We try to be, if we can't find the username, we don't join the platform. So <laughs> <laughs> Not dedicated to it. <laughs> um, thank you guys. Thank you guys, uh, for joining us. I think, uh, I think everybody here had fun. It seems like, seems like this was, this was a really great, this was a really great uh, interview. Thank you again so much, Jacqueline, for joining us. Yeah, thank you guys. I'm really excited you, to Jacqueline. see you. it continues to progress. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It was great. All right. And if you guys want to subscribe to Create IRL, feel free to do so and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. And for now, Rodrigo and I are bouncing out. All right. See you later. <laughs>